after hours. The hard stuff. Really, really hard stuff. Well, December deer chores. You know, we skip a little. I think October and November, December. Or, we get into the thick of it. It's hard to keep track. Yeah, Yeah, when you get into the hunting. And we just are finishing up shooting for a uh, hunt video for Bo, which is really cool. And so then we're transitioning to December deer chores. And this is the fun time. I had a client today. In fact, it's been client week this week. I have one more tomorrow on Friday. And Dylan, you've been going to clients first too. First one of the season today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And my first one was Monday. So um, Wes went to some last week. And I don't know about Joe and Kevin. I you heard? Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, it's that time of year where we're going from hunting to deer chores. And then this weekend I get to sit out and actually hunt for Barry a couple more days. You have a late CWD hunt and regardless of whether you agree or disagree with uh, CWD and some of the regulations and practices to manage CWD, it's hunting opportunity. So I get to hunt Saturday, Sunday. That's what matters most to me. That's what's really important. And then right after that, we're getting into December deer chores. And first of all, next Monday, Tuesday, we're filming on Monday. And sometime Monday, Tuesday, we're going to be out changing batteries and moving cameras where we think this time of year, it's, you know, it's one thing early season, rut, you know, a lot of, even when I talk about during the summertime, we place our reveal cameras on areas we expect to hunt during the fall. This is a time where I want to place my cameras where we expect to see bucks still holding antlers, shedding antlers, and certainly hanging around during the late season and into the winter time. That's a little bit different. We're looking for staining crops this time of year. We're looking at our best cover options with a high stem count where we feel that deer are wintering, which may or may not be in the locations we expect deer to be at in October, November when we're really hunting during the majority of the season. So really important that we start changing all our batteries out. And for us, there's a lot of areas where we can't get into a certain spot. It's very remote. So we put a reveal in a remote spot. We take it off video. We put it on camera only because we want those batteries to last for seven months to a year or greater in those locations so they don't run out. And they're important areas in the center of our cover, areas that we can't go during hunting season unless we shoot a buck and it travels down to those locations. So as of after this weekend, even though we still have some bow left, we're gonna be getting into some of the most remote areas of portions of our property in Wisconsin and Minnesota. Even though Jen has a bow tag, she'll be able to hunt in some of the areas. If, obviously, if we think that there's a great spot to hunt still for Jen with a bow, we're not gonna go into those areas. But the majority of our cameras will be updated with fresh batteries and they'll be set to go for the rest of the winter so that we can monitor where bucks are at, what bucks survived the season, and if they're still holding antlers and when they actually shed. So we're really gonna be monitoring that and that will be a little bit different than our focus for location during October and November for the deer season. So that's right now. We're really excited about that and we're gonna make those changes very soon. Number two, major timber cuttings. I can't wait to get out in the woods. Last year, because I had a tag, my bow tag, I was still hunting all the way to January then uh, in uh, Wisconsin. Then I really didn't put a lot of time into cutting these last couple weeks, last 10 days of December. But I love cutting this time of year because we're putting big tops on the ground in locations. I'm not going in and completing any major, we don't really have a lot of major hinge cutting. We recommend hinge cutting 15, 20% of the time on client properties. I think I've recommended that one property out of four so far this week, so we're following the percentages pretty accurately. Uh, this week. So I'm going into areas where we have big stands of aspen, where we have big, mature, maybe junk oaks, ash, whatever it might be, where we want to cut those down, get tops on the ground. We're going to bring sunlight in next summer during the growing season, and we're starting with those big trees first. You don't want to start with smaller trees, hinge cuts possibly, and then drop big trees and, and drop them on top. Hickory, that's another one that we're gonna be uh, uh, targeting right now. So I wanna get those tops in the ground. Why is that? Because it's December going into January and all those tops feed deer. They also provide cover to any grouse that we have. 
rabbits in the woods. And so I want to get those tops on the ground. This is the perfect time to do the do so. The earlier, the better. And so we can make a great impact this time of year just by going in and dropping a few large trees in each area that we plan to cut, which will set the stage for more cutting in January, February, March. We cut all the way from January 1st last year, or I did, all the way to March. We had Joel come out and help us a little bit too. So I can't wait to get that started next week. And uh, that'll be on our short list of deer chores for December. Number three. When's the best time to scout? Let me ask you, is it the best time to scout during the summertime when bucks and deer in general are not doing what they're going to do during the hunting season? When foliage is on the trees? When lots of leaves are on the ground? What about February, March? When deer, bucks in general, end of January, mid-January, have moved to their winter deer destinations? Deer yards in the north? standing crops, lowland, even in ag areas? Or what about right at the end of December? You don't have a tag, you're not gonna spook any deer to your neighbors because they're not hunting, but you can still see the sign very readily apparent where bucks were actually rutting during November, where they're making rubs September. You can tell by the shavings of the rubs. Are they under the leaves? So they're end of September, mid-September when they first start rubbing? Or are they on top of the leaves? Where it was end of October, early November. What about scrapes, rubs? This is a great time, we'll talk about the second rut here, to see what's going on with the second rut, where deer were rutting in December versus November. There's a lot of clues you can unravel now that really get covered up when it gets into more February, March, when you might be shed hunting. A lot of people look at, well, you know, shed season. I talked to a client today, you know, sheds were dropped. This must be where that buck was. He was watching me when I was coming in every single time. Was he really? Was he really watching you park, walk in, and then he dropped his sheds there? I don't think so. I think that's where he chose to drop them in March, February. Might not have anything to do with the hunting season. Right now, end of December, first part of January, incredible time to scout. Don't miss out. Number four, Doe Patrol. I mentioned Dante here. Dante, stepson, he loves to shoot does, he and his buddy Alec. I fully expect when you get into the holiday doe hunt in Wisconsin, they'll be in a certain blind southwest Wisconsin looking for some does. I know my friend Aaron wants another doe, and they'll be in a spot where they can take advantage of some doe patrol, taking a couple does out. And let's face it, you know, I like shooting deer. I like shooting does. I like shooting bucks. I like the strategy of bucks. But when it comes to shooting does, great opportunity for younger hunters. Doesn't matter if they're 14, 16, 12, or 25. Give that opportunity to the younger hunting generation. What a great way to practice, to get excited about the hunt. Let those younger hunters get involved. What an opportunity. I know a lot of clients or a lot of people, hunters in general, where they need to shoot a lot of does. They don't have the time. They might not have the tags. And so they're missing out on not only a great time to reduce a deer herd, improve sex ratios for the following year, you know what's a better time to shoot does? Early in the season or late in the season? Shoot them early, people say, we gotta shoot them early because that affects your sex ratios, more chasing, rutting activity during the rut. But if you do it at the end of the season, it does the same for the following season. So not a bad time. And when you do it in December, there's hardly anybody hunting, you're not pushing deer to your neighbors. Every time you shoot the gun, doesn't matter if it's a coyote or a deer, you're pushing deer. Let's face it, if you've ever spent time in the woods shooting a lot of deer, when you shoot your gun, it spooks deer. It's just the way it works. So a great time to shoot deer at a time when there's not a lot of pressure in the woods, you're not gonna affect the land that much, not gonna affect the deer herd. And then at the same time, you really don't wanna miss out on an opportunity to take a younger hunter, allow them to shoot a deer, Allow them to gain experience while also explaining to them how they're helping the herd. So great opportunity, don't miss out on that. And number five, second rut reality. What do I mean by reality? It means a lot of people deny the second rut ever takes place. That could be because of game biologists that really aren't experienced in their, and they might have 25 years experience in a state department. That doesn't mean that they're actually deer experienced experience in the woods, experience hunting, experience observing deer, 
it could mean that they look at that rut and I've explained this before you have the primary rut secondary rut and a third rut some game departments take the average of all those being bred and that's their average data conception well if you're figuring in the second and the third rut that takes the actual primary rut average it makes it look like it's 10 days two weeks later because they're figuring in the second and third rut that take place a month after the primary and then finally two months after the primary so people look at that and say well the primary rut is later and there's only one rut there's actually two ruts three ruts and when you go down the south there could be four ruts the bottom line is the reality of the second rut is real go out in december look at those scrapes that are still fresh you know i was on a property today i'm going to miss what date it is today i think it's 14th. december december 14th so december 14th fresh scrape today but then we pass scrapes that have a bunch of leaves on them i was out earlier this week i filmed two scrapes that were wide open really cool to see and when you have snow on the ground and you see that dirt flung all over it's pretty unmistakable when those scrapes are actually taking place really cool and seeing that second rut you go out and scout this time of year thinking that maybe there's no second rut and then you see it happening it really sets a tone for next year and the reality of the second rut and making you realize there is a second rut and it helps you take advantage of that makes you a better hunter makes you more knowledgeable of deer white tail behavior buck behavior in general and it makes sure that you're on stand next year when these rutting behaviors take place in december so that you can enjoy not only the primary rut but the second secondary rut too and the reality of the second rut and i think that's an important part of scouting and a great chore that you can take part in in December to not only help you enjoy whitetail and rutting behavior even more, buck behavior, deer behavior in general, but really help you plan for the following year for the reality of the second rut and getting out and enjoying an extended hunt and enjoying a time that is the most missed opportunity in the deer woods, the second rut for next year and beyond. I appreciate you guys watching the YouTube channel, but I don't know if everyone knows everything that we have to offer, whether it's on whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, our website, our WHS Wildlife Blends, our seed company. Also, Instagram you can check out. I'm very active on Instagram, putting strategies on there, photos of what we do every day. Uh, much more active there than Facebook. But our seed, web classes, books, clients, Articles, I have over 600 articles on whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, everything whitetail strategy. Of course, we have hats on there, and then make sure to check us out on Instagram again. But lots of stuff to offer. We're always coming out with new things, and this isn't the end of it. We have more things coming soon. Make sure to check us out.